Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to this session. In this session and in the subsequent session, we will discuss the structure and further development in the uh, banking industry. So in the previous sessions, uh, we completed the discussion of what is banks and what are the uh, various activities of banks, especially by using uh, its balance sheet. And in this session, uh, let us start now uh, with uh, some of the uh, banking activities uh, without using a uh, balance sheet. That means some of the off balance sheet activities. So the off balance sheet activities involve trading financial instruments and generating income from fees and loan sales and activities that affect bank profits, but they do not appear on bank balance sheets. So there are a couple of activities that do not come under uh, off balance sheet activities. One of them uh, is uh, loan sales, uh, it is also called as uh, secondary loan participation. So the loan sales it has grown in importance in recent years uh, as it involves uh, income generated by loan sales. So a loan sales involves a contract that sells all or part of the cash stream from a specific loan and thereby removes the loan so that it is no longer an asset on the bank's balance sheet. And banks earn profits uh, by selling loans for amounts that are slightly greater than the amounts of the original loans. Right. So, the point here is that actually some of the banks, uh, they are able to attract lots of loans. So what they do that, uh, in order to minimize, optimize their activity, some of the loans they will sell it off. They are able to raise their loan and some of the loans they will sell it off. And But by selling, they will be selling it uh, slightly greater than the amounts of the original loans. So those who will buy it actually, because the high interest rate on these loans uh, make them attractive. Maybe some, some banks they are able to attract uh, a large amount of loans and the high interest rate on these loans make them attractive and some institutions, some financial institutions are willing to buy them and so maybe they are unable to raise this kind of uh, this amount of loans by their own. So what they will do that they will find it as a business opportunity and this is some other institution, financial institutions are willing to buy them preferable of course it is greater than uh, higher price uh, at a higher price that they earn a slightly lower interest rate than the original uh, interest rate on them. So approximately the difference will be uh, 0 0.15 percentage point difference. Uh, this will be the difference in the interest rate uh, at which uh, other institutions are willing to buy it. Uh, so that, that means the difference. So the, the new institutions, when they buy these loans, uh, they will be getting slightly lower profit, less return as compared to the uh, original seller here. Okay, so this is one kind of activities uh, of balance sheet activities. Then comes the second one is generation of fee income for providing specialized services uh, to their customers, servicing a mortgage backed security. So there are several examples for that. Uh, one is foreign exchange trades on customer's behalf. That is one. So pro during the, in this activity through this foreign exchange trade, banks make uh, fee income uh, which do not come under. It may not. It, it will not be reported. Uh, this activity will not be reported in the balance sheet. And servicing uh, mortgage backed securities that is collecting interest and principal payments and then paying them out that is another kind of services and banks also provide uh, backup lines of credit as we have seen that in one of the previous session we said that in order to move, reduce moral hazard problems um, in order to monitor uh, banks uh, make loan commitment 
So, here the loan commitment uh, it come, come with a fee that means the bank agrees to provide a loan up to a given dollar amount over a specified period of time. Right. So, for through uh, committing this the bank is uh, gaining a fee and there is also credit lines with the overdraft privilege that means the customers uh, they, are, they can overdraw uh, than the amount they are having in their current account. So, the credit lines with overdraft pr privileges that also earn some income and then comes uh, creating structured investment vehicles. So, in SIV a SIV is a pool of investment assets uh, that attempts to profit from uh, credit spreads between short term debt and long term structured finance product such as asset backed securities. So, that means uh, creating that um, uh, SIVs that means borrowing from short, uh, borrowing from short, so many uh, short term borrowing then putting everything most of them uh, clubbing all together uh, into different financial product that is making investment uh, in another financial products. So, in this process also banks can make in a profit, uh, they can earn uh, a additional income. So, however, you know that uh, it can potentially expose banks to uh, risk as it happened in the global global financial crisis. The way it was done in 2007-8 crisis that the mortgage loan. So, what has done that actually uh, so many uh, individual mortgage loans and five were converted into a structured financial product and made it as a it look like entirely different financial product then it was sold out in the market. However, you know that that was one of the main reason for the 2007-8 crisis. Coming to further activities also includes uh, trading activities and risk management techniques. So, the to manage interest rate risk uh, banks often engage in off balance sheet activities such as trading in financial futures. Uh, options for debt instruments uh, and interest rate swaps and bank engaged in international banking also conduct transaction uh, in the foreign exchange market. So, sometimes this kind of speculation can also be very risky business and as often led to bank insolvencies in many cases. It also, also lead to principal agent problems that means a kind of conflict of interest come up uh, when uh, banks engage in trading activities and risk management. So, there are some in order to overcome that kind of conflict of interest there are several uh, tools are recommended suggested and this actually we will discuss this one uh, in detail when we discuss uh, in one of the session the conflict of interest and asymmetric information. However, shortly uh, here the uh, so some of the tools to reduce this conflict of interest is separation of trading activities and bookkeeping, uh, limits on exposure and value at risk that the maximum loss that is portfolio is likely to sustain over a uh, given time interval. So, these co concepts are uh, these issues which I am just uh, mentioned here as I mentioned uh, we will be discussing this in detail in some of the uh, forthcoming sessions. So, let us now move to uh, continue our discussion uh, to another area that is the structure and operation of the banking industry over time. The operations of uh, individual banks how they acquire use and manage funds to make profit are roughly similar throughout the world in fact. So, in all countries banks means normally like this they accept a deposit from the general public and lend to the needy people including households and firms. And in all countries banks are financial intermediaries in the business and they earn profit. They are just like uh, any other firm however, because of the kind of uh, business they are doing that the um, accepting deposit and lending loans uh, because of the kind of activities uh, banking business is uh, different from the rest of the business right. So, in most countries however, what we can see that uh, recently if you go through the banking the number of banking banks the number of banks in, in countries you can see that in most countries a few banks few large banks typically dominate the banking industry. So, for example, in India you know that there are only uh, nearly there are 36 commercial banks. So, out of this you, you know that a few banks uh, they dominate right. For example, SBI, HDFC these are the large banks they dominate in the market. For example, SBI is the largest commercial bank in India 
and however in the case when it comes to for example what i mentioned here is that in india there are only 36 commercial banks scheduled commercial banks and nearly 46 banks uh, 46 uh, foreign banks working in india so as compared to this if you look at us united states uh, we can see that there are on the order of 5700 commercial banks uh, 800 savings and loan associations and 350 uh, mutual savings banks and uh, more than 7000 uh, credit unions. So here is a natural question is that because look at for example in the US there are large number of banks but in India uh, there are only a few number of banks. So does this diversity for example in the US system the American banking system is more competitive and therefore more economically efficient and sound than banking system in India and other countries. So in order to understand this, uh, let us see how the structure the and operation, the structure and um, operation of the banking industry uh, in the western settings uh, as well as in India and how over time the structure has changed, what are the changes happen over time. So one of the things uh, happened uh, in recent years uh, is that financial innovation and the growth of the shadow banking system. Uh, in recent years, the traditional banking business of making loans that are funded by deposits has been in decline. That is one of the recent development for the last uh, more than last two decades. Some of this business has been replaced by shadow banking system in which uh, bank lending has been replaced by lending via securities market with the involvement of several different financial institutions. So the process of financial innovation actually the, the financial innovation transformed the entire financial system. Like other industries, the financial industry is in business as you know to earn profits by selling its products, right. So their objective is also just like uh, other firms to maximize their profits. Uh, financial institution, in order to maximize financial institutions, they develop new products to satisfy their own needs as well as of their customers. In other words, innovation. So that is financial innovation uh, which can be extremely beneficial to economy that is the desire and it is driven by the desire to get uh, to earn more profit by these banks. So financial innovation as I mentioned, uh, this is driven by the desire to earn profits. So a change in the financial environment uh, will stimulate a search by financial institutions and for innovations that are likely to be profitable. So starting in the 1960s, individuals and financial institutions operating in the financial markets were confronted with the drastic changes in the economic environment. So one of it is actually the inflation and interest rates climbed sharply and became harder to predict a situation that changed demand condition in financial market. The inflation risk and the interest rate risk uh, became one of the key challenges for the banking industry. So in order to overcome this, they started thinking uh, alternative options. In addition, in parallel, you know that the rapid advances in the computer technology uh, that changed the supply conditions in the market. In addition, financial regulations became more burdensome. So because of all these things, you know that some of these things are in favorable, some of the things are especially financial regulations, it all become very burdensome. So because of all these things, uh, eventually, naturally, gradually, banking system began to look for uh, financial innovation. And the financial financial institution found that many of the old ways of doing business were no longer profitable. Many financial intermediaries found that they were no longer able to acquire funds with their traditional financial instruments and without these funds they would soon be out of business. So in order to survive uh, in the new economic environment, uh, financial institution had to research and develop new products and services that would meet customer needs and prove profitable. And this process is often referred to as financial engineering. So a financial engineering, this process 
uh, started due to these uh, pressing concerns. So, financial engineering it led to an explosion in derivative tradings and speculation in the financial market. On the one hand, we can see that the financial engineering uh, it revolutionized the financial markets, but at the same time, it also played uh, a role in the 2008 crisis. In one of the session, we will study the financial crisis, uh, the the theoretical background as well as the practical aspects uh, we will be discussing in one of the session and at that time we will also see how financial engineering contributed to the collapse of financial system in 2008. So, one of the thing responses uh, to changes in demand condition because we one of the risk that the banking system often face is the interest rate volatility. So, the most significant change uh, in the economic environment uh, that altered the demand for financial products in recent years has been the dramatic increase in the volatility of interest rate. So, large fluctuations uh, in the interest rate uh, led to the uh, lead to the substantial capital gains or uh, losses because one of in one of the session we discussed uh, previous session we discussed the interest rate risk management at that time using the gap analysis we have seen how the net worth of the bank will increase or decrease due to fluctuations in interest rate so this actually created greater uncertainty about the returns on investments so in order to overcome this financial institutions find that lending is more attractive uh, if interest rate risk is lower. So, in, in order to uh, address this issue, they started using following adjustable rate mortgages. So, the adjustable rate mortgage, for example, an adjustable rate mortgage might have uh, initially uh, one fixed rate of interest. However, when the market rate of interest changes, the adjustable rate mortgage also change the interest rate in flow with the uh, market rate of interest. That means, flexible interest rate keep profits high when rates high. So, lower initial interest rates make them attractive to home buyers. So, this attractive feature because the adjustable rate mortgage allow uh, mortgage is issuing institutions to earn higher interest rates on ex existing mortgages when market rates rise and profits remain high during this period. This attractive feature of adjustable rate mortgage has encouraged uh, mortgage is issuing institution to issue uh, adjustable rate mortgages with lower initial interest rates than those on conventional fixed rate mortgages making them popular with many households. Then another uh, innovation uh, is financial derivatives. So, financial here given the greater uh, demand for the reduction of interest rate risk commodity exchanges such as Chicago board of trade recognize that. Uh, if they could develop a product that could develop help investors and financial institutions to protect themselves or hedge interest rate risk, then they could make profit by selling these instruments. So, this includes the future contracts in which the seller agrees to provide a certain standardized commodity to the buyer on a specific future date at an agreed price uh, had been around for a long time. Then let us also see what are the responses to changes in supply condition that is due to the changes to the response to the uh, changes in information technology. So, the most uh, important source of the changes in supply conditions that stimulated financial innovation uh, has been uh, the improvement in computer and telecommunication technology which is often called as information technology. So, it had two effects first it has lowered the cost of processing financial transaction as you know. So, making it profitable for financial institutions to create new financial products and services for the public. And second uh, another thing uh, it has made it easier for investors to acquire information uh, thereby making it easier for firms to issue securities. So, the rapid development in IT, uh, it, uh, it has resulted uh, in many new financial products uh, and services. So, one of them is actually you may be familiar, uh, you are so familiar that one is uh, credit card and debit card. And you know that the credit card, the credit card have been around since well uh, long, long back uh, even before World War Second. So, 
However, it became more popular uh, recently after the uh, due to the uh, uh, development uh, in uh, information technology and the debit card also you know that your ATM card in shortly. So these are all actually you can make a transaction using uh, information technology very easily right. So for example credit card I think uh, you are aware of what is credit card. So a firm issuing credit cards earns income from loans it make to, uh, makes to credit card holders and from payments made by stores on credit card purchases. Right, that the, the commission amount it uh, vary from country to country and providers to providers. And uh, however, anyway, the thing is that it has actually made uh, the uh, contributed to the in the transaction uh, and the financial transaction made very smooth. And as a result, uh, the customers, the households, uh, consumers, and uh, sellers uh, found it uh, is uh, very convenient. So it actually also raised the bank's uh, business as well. That is one and subsequent part that you that you are well aware that actually the, the developments in electronic banking uh, that the ATM or automatic teller machines and home banking and virtual banking. So automatic teller machine I think you are uh, aware of that actually one important form this uh, e-banking facility uh, an electronic machine that allows customers to get cash make deposit transfer funds from one account to another and check balances right. And because of ATMs, uh, you know, also one of the advantage of, of is ATM is that because of their low cost, ATMs can be put at location other than a bank or its branches. Actually, even that means actually having branches without actually having a branch. You can see the ATM, ATM wherever ATM. So it's actually so the purpose of a bank branch indeed. Uh, actually, then actually no need of a branch itself. Then comes home banking. Uh, it's now called. Uh, cost effective for banks to set up electronic banking facility in which banks customer is linked up with the bank's computer and allowed to carry out transaction by using smartphone, tablet or personal computer. Uh, then another development uh, is virtual bank. Virtual bank means a new type of banking institution, uh, a bank that has no physical location but rather exists only in cyberspace. Then another uh, development is uh, junk bonds. Uh, before the advent of computers and advanced uh, telecommunication, it was difficult to acquire information about the financial situation uh, of firms uh, that might want to sell securities. Uh, because the difficulty in screening out bad from good risk, credit risk, uh, the only firms that were able to sell bonds were very well established corporations that had uh, high ratings. Some firms, uh, you know that before 1980s, only corporation that could issue bonds with rating BAA or above could raise funds by selling newly issued bonds. Uh, the some companies, some firms that had fallen on bad times, uh, which also known as uh, fallen angels, had previously issued long-term corporate bonds with the ratings that are now fallen below BAA bonds that were also known as uh, junk bonds. So with the, with the improvement of information technology, it became easier for investors to acquire uh, financial information about corporations, uh, making it easier to screen out bad from good risk. So with easier screening, investors were more willing to buy long-term debt securities from less well-known corporation with the lower credit rate ratings. So that means with this change in supply condition, uh, one would expect that some smart individual would pioneer the concept of selling new public issues uh, of junk bonds, uh, not for fallen angels, but for companies that had not yet achieved uh, investment grade status. And another development is commercial paper market. You know, commercial paper is a short term debt security issued by uh, large banks and corporations. Uh, that was also possible due to the development uh, in changes in supply condition that is changes uh, in information uh, technology. Further development uh, one is uh, securitization and shadow banking system. So securitization means uh, to transform uh, otherwise illiquid uh, financial assets into marketable uh, capital market securities uh, that can be sold to uh, investors. That means transforming uh, illiquid so say due to uh, dues from a borrower, uh, th this kind of assets are converted into marketable capital markets, securities. So this kind of things happen very much uh, in the 2007-8 crisis. 
So securitization played an especially prominent role in the development of the subprime mortgage market uh, in the mid 2000s. Then another development uh, happened is in order to avoid uh, existing regulation that means loophole mining two sets of regulation house uh, that also another development that means uh, banks banking sector responding to avoid the regulation so there are there were two regulations mainly one regulation is that reserve requirements of the banks that means of the total uh, deposit liabilities at certain fraction should be kept with the central bank so that means they cannot lend their entire deposit to the uh, in the market. That means certain portion it should be kept with the central bank as reserve requirement. That is one. Uh, second one is restriction on interest paid on deposits. There is certain threshold beyond that they cannot pay. That means uh, maximum limits on the interest rate that could be paid on time deposits. Uh, these are the two requ uh, regulations. In order to overcome, two developments happen. One is actually the development of uh, money market development of money market mutual funds. So money market mutual funds issue shares that are redeemable at a fixed price. Uh, money market fund they raise fund from investor and invest in short term money market securities like treasury bills, negotiable certificates of deposits, uh, commercial paper etc and that provide them interest. So they earn a profit and at the same time you know that this cannot be considered as deposit so that they don't need to keep a reserve with the central bank. Second one is sweep accounts, uh, development of sweep accounts. So in the sweep account arrangement any balance above a certain amount in a corporation's checking account at the end of a business day are swept out, swept out of the account and invested in overnight securities that pay interest. So because the swept account funds are no longer classified as checkable deposits, they are not subject to reserve requirements and thus are not tax. So that means uh, because of swept account, sweep accounts, whichever is kept in the sweep accounts, uh, it cannot be, con it will not be considered as deposit liability. So there is no need of keeping certain fraction of it in, in the central bank. Then there is further financial innovation. There was a decline in traditional banking, where so that they have been they have started raising money from off balance sheet activities. So, one the financial innovation, the decline in traditional banking. One is decline in cost advantages in acquiring funds, and second one decline in income advantage on uses of funds. So these all the further developments in the banking sector uh, over time. So we have covered here uh, mainly uh, the various aspects that the, the development um, of banking uh, over time, uh, the structure and the means mainly the structure in terms of uh, how financial innovation happened, uh, what, what kind of financial innovation, uh, what is the response of banking industry uh, in, in, the pro, in, the, in, in terms of banking innovations and how in order to earn more profits. Uh, these are all the and also as a response to supply chain, supply uh, conditions that is IT what all the changes happened uh, in the uh, banking sector over time. So here the discussion we overall just had mostly with the uh, developed countries context but that is most of them are uh, generalizable to the uh, across the globe other country settings as well. So in the next session we will continue this then we will discuss the banking structure uh, in India as well. Thank you and see you in the next session.